Hey, I wanted to share with you another video featuring William Padilla Brown. We filmed this a couple of years ago, so it's a little bit dated. And I have to mention that since then, William has done so many amazing things, including spirulina algae and uh, just really bringing forward all of his products at uh, microsymbiotics.net. He's come a long way, uh, but it's interesting to kind of see this retrospective uh, as to where he was before, his homegrown lab. And you may remember William from the uh, molecular identification of mushrooms. Uh, video that we did. It's been a huge hit. Hope you enjoy a little bit more with William and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks. Show you guys what we got going on down here. Um, kind of experimental uh, cordyceps space and um, culture bank and things like that uh, that we have going on down in the basement. <laughs> Over here, uh, this is where we fruit the cordyceps mushrooms. So I'm a citizen scientist. Um, a lot of my work is research. My company that I started, Mycosymbiotics, is a mushroom research and production business. So production is kind of what keeps the research afloat. So we have our outdoor fruiting room where we produce gourmet mushrooms that we sell to local uh, local resort, Allenberry Resort. Um, have a very good relationship with the chef there. I've been working with him for years. Uh, throughout the year, we do a lot of wild harvesting. And while we're wild harvesting for uh, income, we're also bioprospecting for genetics. So we're out there searching for new strains. We do find all sorts of gourmet strains. And uh, my library at one point was over 30 different native species of uh, gourmet and medicinal mushrooms. Uh, we're doing breeding. We're doing molecular identification of mushrooms. We're doing molecular identification of mating types for breeding mushrooms. Um, so science has this whole new look about it. Anybody really can get into science. I have no formal background. I dropped out of high school, but I became interested in these things and through the internet and through forums and going to different uh, events and classes. I taught myself the skills that I needed to learn um, to be able to uh, do the research that I want to do, which is mostly, re mostly revolves around uh, fungi and algae and things of that nature. The main thing that I do in my lab is bring in wild cultures. I'll bring in a specimen of cordyceps. I'll clone it. I'll grow out the clone or I'll take spores from the wild specimen or I'll take spores from the clone. Once I have spores, collect them and then I grow single spores. Um, from these single spores, we have to figure out what their mating type is basically. Are, is it a boy or a girl? Then once I know if it's a boy or a girl, I can mate the boy to the girl and produce offspring. Um, and when you breed them by single spores, um, you have more control over the outcome of uh, the morphologies. You can start to say like, oh, this one is producing mushrooms that have long stroma, or um, this one is producing higher cordycepin. I'm going to keep breeding it with the other one that's producing long stroma and high cordycepin. We're delving more into the molecular uh, side of things and maybe figure out why is this mushroom producing these compounds? Why does this mushroom fruit the way that it does? Um, and then we sell those cultures to people that are farming. Right now, the average uh, going price, you can get around $800 to $1,000 per dry, uh, pound of dry cordyceps mushrooms, um, which is a lot of money for an agricultural production. But I wanna get more money in more farmers' pockets uh, through cultivation of cordyceps, and uh, by breeding good genetics is one of the best ways to do that for people. Um, aside from that, we're bringing in native genetics uh, North American native genetics of various gourmet and medicinal mushrooms like the oyster mushrooms, the reishi, um, the lion's mane, and things of that nature. And we're providing those native genetics to people um, so that we can propagate these genetics around the country and get more people growing native strains versus strains that are coming from Europe or Asia or whatever. And I just think there's a lot of, a lot of beauty in that. Um, I think it's helping more people connect uh, uh, to their food. Even if I'm in the field doing my molecular work, I can send all my stuff out uh, to GeneWiz. Then they'll send me back the sequences and I can open them up on my phone. So here, you see I just blasted it. And just close that out. And I have a 99.62% match to Cordyceps Militaris that Mushroom Observer put on. So that's what we do here. It's just like a lot of collection of genetics, um, a lot of research. So I'm just scratching the surface, you know? By posting these things online all the time, posting these on social media and even doing videos like this, it helps to inspire more people to figure out even more cool things that we could be doing. I'm so focused on cordyceps that the mating type thing is what I figured out, but like 
Maybe somebody's focused on some plant or maybe somebody's focused on some other mushroom or some insect and they find out all sorts of other cool stuff. I just find a lot of uh, pleasure in learning. Um, uh, this is what I do for fun as well. Um, so to be able to make my work uh, something that I like to do is really cool for me. Uh, yeah, I just want to teach more people how to um, do science, you know, how to take control of, of, of their lives and their, and their work and um, learn how to utilize these scientific methods to, to make life better for themselves and for the people around them. So this is the fruiting room. Nothing too special. I used to run a bigger fruiting room in Lemoyne, um, but as I've been saying, we're kind of in a transition uh, where we're changing the direction of the business. Uh, eventually, I do want to get back into uh, larger scale fruiting, um, but for now, this is enough to supply the restaurants that I, uh, that I supply. It's pretty much automatic in here. Um, the the AC is usually on a timer. Um, because it's cold outside, we really don't need the AC on right now, but it, um, these portable ACs are really good um, because it has a fan unit and it can act as our, my fresh air exchange. So we do need fresh air in here for the mushrooms to produce properly. And this can bring in air uh, and, and pull out some of the CO2. Because I mostly grow for production, I'm not always producing spawns. I usually uh, go through spawn distributors, but whenever I do get um, clones in, like I'm cloning a wild oyster mushroom or my taki or whatever, and I want to test it out before I uh, sell it because I do sell cultures through my website, mycosymbiotics.net. And we have um, a lot of different commercial genetics um, that do come from larger distributors, but we also have a lot of wild clones, um, which this one's not fruiting. I actually just harvested and ate the mushrooms that grew off of this, but um, this is a wild clone of an oyster mushroom. Um, so we do produce spawn to test our strains that we're, that we're bringing in from the wild. Um, so this is, again is for research, but mostly for production to help uh, keep my research funded. Um, so we do have some oyster mushrooms growing here. Um, classic mushroom, super delicious, super easy to grow. Um, we do, this is probably the mushroom that we harvest the most of, and we take this to the restaurants. Um, so this is one of the commercial bags uh, where we produce a lot of these, take them to the restaurants, um, and again, we do a lot of testing. So you can see my bags look a little bit different. Um, uh, we use local sawdust. Uh, we have uh, all the materials that we need for pasteurization and things like that here. But otherwise, we just have a lot of fun and produce a lot of uh, beautiful gourmet mushrooms and uh, feed a lot of cool people. Propagating mycelia, always.